Around its rim, there would be 60 capsules taking a total of a thousand people at a time for a ride. The reaction was, yes, initially I think it probably was balmy. And I can remember a phone call to Lambeth Council to one of their planning officers. I spoke to this planning officer that um, we're just about to put in a planning application for a 500 foot wheel on the south bank and we're not quite sure what the fee should be. So this planning officer was, was, it was very professional and uh, you know, just, well, how big are the capsules, how big is the... Uh, the platform, you know, how big are, you know, just trying to work it out, how many capsules, 60 capsules, um, and in the end he said, oh, 67 pounds or something like that, <laughs> which was just as well because we couldn't have afforded much more. <laughs> the wheel as a symbol is universal, it's not just a symbol of the mechanical age or the industrial age, although it, it obviously has those connotations. There is also the, the wheel of life, uh, there's the wheel as a symbol of time returning on itself. We all wear watches. We're reminded of it all the time. And so it, it, has, it has great symbolism and it stands in contrast to a spire or a, a, a tower, which has single direction. At first, they considered Hyde Park as a site to celebrate the millennium and then settled on Jubilee Gardens on the Thames Embankment, opposite the Houses of Parliament and in front of the old Greater London Council's headquarters. It was designed to hang over the river. To make it ecologically attractive, they thought of powering it by turbines driven by the river's ebb and flow. The concept was persuasive for environmentalists, but turned out to be not powerful enough for the ambition. By then, the idea was attracting controversy and opposition. Projects like this ludicrous Ferris wheel that's projected to be built across the river from here. Does she, does she not think but it shouldn't be there. It should be somewhere where it doesn't impinge on great historic buildings with which it has nothing in common. The place they've chosen is relatively small scale, with a relatively small scale park, which is very precious to us. We're very short of open space, and Jubilee Gardens, which is going to be expanded, is very, very important, and this wheel is going to spoil it. There were, however, distinguished supporters who applauded the idea. We're always difficult with new things, you know, the shock of the new. And this is definitely new. It's not a building. It's not a sculpture. What is it? Actually, it's a great piece of fun. Um, and it's a wonderful machine, but it's a very aesthetic. I mean, I think a bicycle wheel is a very beautiful object. It could be a sculpture. It is a sculpture, really. Actually, I think it's like very nice because it's there. I go, you know, I'm in the House of Lords and I think it's very good for all of us, MPs and Lords, to be looked down upon by the public, by the people. When everything is rectilinear like that, I think it's absolutely marvellous to be able to add something circular. And certainly in my feelings as a designer, that aesthetically this is exactly what London needs. It seems to have all the fizz that the millennium is meant to have. David and Julia persuaded British Airways to put up initial funding of half a million pounds. That meant they could complete the redesign of the wheel, taking out the transom bar, substituting cables and making it 2,000 tonnes lighter and, in their view, a hundred times more beautiful. It is a challenging structure to build, but whilst it's large, the engineering uh, principles involved are well established. We weren't really able to look into any of these things in any great detail until we secured a sponsor. British Airways provided the seed funding to carry out all those initial studies. Now they needed more than seed money. They needed a hugely wealthy sponsor to carry this heavyweight investment. There were meetings with British Airways chief executive Bob Ayling. It just seemed to me that this might be a really great idea, apart from for London, for us in BA. It's about uh, inbound tourism, it's about London, it's about the importance of London. It's something which is going to attract public attention. This computer illustration shows the final design of the wheel as it's being built. It uh, is 135 meters in diameter. You can see the 32 capsules located on the outside of the wheel. The rim itself is six meters deep and is connected by 64 spoke cables to the hub and spindle in the center, plus an additional uh, 16 
um, rotation cables which are connected to the outer cord of the rim. Not only is the wheel dramatically cantilevered so that it hangs over the water, it will be subject to enormous wind pressures. To survive, it needs to be able to flex. Dampers have been built to reduce the sway to a barely noticeable degree. Then there is also metal fatigue to consider. Engineer Jacques Berenbach wants to design a wheel that, five-year license notwithstanding, will last for 50 years. At the moment you can see how far we are. The shapes are coming up now. Into some weeks we have the first sections and then you can realize how big the wheel will be. It is an amazing work, never done before, and we have to do it in a very short time. We're looking from quality from two points of view. One, we need a good fatigue resistance on the structure, and also we need a good appearance from the architect's point of view. But the professionalism of the welders is really first class. Well, I don't know. Well, the, the plate, yeah, plate oh, no, remains flat. I don't flat. think we don't, we don't have time to grind it. No. I think it would have looked better. No, I don't think. The capsules had to be not only, and literally, revolutionary, they had to be beautiful. David and Julia approached an old friend and fellow designer. Julia and I both knew Nick Bailey who's an architect, an industrial designer, and designer of boats, builder of boats. We gave him a call and asked him whether he might be interested in giving us a hand with this. This image shows the very first shape of the capsule that David and Julia had uh, arrived at, which was uh, a perfect ellipsoid. And in many ways, it's, it has quite sharp ends, and it's a very elegant shape, but what we found was that the glass was simply the amount of curvature in those end panels was, was not achievable. And so uh, we had to develop a slightly modified shape where the nose cone is slightly less sharp and slightly less pronounced. The Shell Tower overlooks the site of the Millennium Wheel. When it was built in the 50s, it was the tallest office building in London. Now, it's about to be dwarfed. This time next year, it'll be up. What's incredible is that you're going to actually be able, looking through the wheel, looking towards Parliament and looking towards Big Ben, because the wheel will be another 130 feet from where we're standing. Big Ben Charms. I've got a clock on my desk that someone gave me and it's just counting down the second by second down to the December the 15th, 1999. And I take that to meetings, and when we come out of meetings, you can say, well, there you go, there's one hour, one hour and a half less to get that project done. Time counts. I think it's true to say that the entire wheel is designed around the hub and spindle, quite literally. It's a very long and um, specially fabricated spindle. It's 23 meters long. It was fabricated in in the Czech Republic, in one of the largest foundries in Europe. It, it certainly is one of the most exciting bits. The, the hub and spindle is, is cast in steel, and it had to be cast because we wanted to make sure that it was safe and the consistency of the steel was there throughout the metal. And so, you know, today's going to be a very exciting day. In the Czech Republic, Skoda has a long history of heavy engineering big guns and armaments in two world wars and little motor cars in peacetime. But they still like a challenge. It's amazing. It's a huge factory. They've got all the pieces under production. They're pouring the final two pieces tonight. Uh, we've just been to see the moulds. They're making the final preparations. We're just waiting to hear the news on the final composition of the steel. It's an incredible place.
the hub and spindle is all sectionalized. And what you're seeing is the pieces before they're all welded together. Bits of the wheel are being made all over Europe in different factories uh, by different companies. Venice, home of the finest glassmakers in the world. They've been chosen to produce the curved panels for the capsules. The glass has to be immensely strong, but also give maximum visibility. These are the glasses which will be bent. The glasses which is in the mould will go inside the furnish and they will be bent together. It is very difficult. In some ways it's a black art because you're heating glass to a temperature at which it, it starts to melt, uh, starts to deform. And you've got to be very careful you don't overcook it. And certainly the, the pieces of glass on the noses of the capsule, uh, these pieces here, have a very high degree of curvature, i.e. there's a large amount of deformation from the flat surface. And they, they were very difficult to produce. They've built a test rig for the capsule in France to check the stability system that will keep pod and passengers upright. They also had to be sure that 25 passengers at a time can board the moving wheel. The stability system is so important that we, we cannot afford not to build that because in case the stability system is not working properly, well, there is no capsule and no wheel. <laughs> the first of the four rim sections arrived from Holland. There's only one way to bring the giant structures safely to their destination in the heart of the city, by floating them up the River Thames. The dream is becoming a reality. It's the 13th of July. We're standing on a beach just up from Canary Wharf on the Thames. And behind us, the first rim section of the wheel is being delivered to site on schedule. It's not a case of just keeping it straight when we go through the bridges. It's a case of sometimes putting a little bit of a twist or a bend in it, like a table through a door. You've got to get the legs through, then you've got to get the middle, and then you've got the back legs coming on afterwards. Everybody at the site is working flat out. Any delay could be catastrophic. The last week has been very worrying because it's a program where we've continually said we haven't got a spare day in the project whatsoever. So if we lose a day on any key activity, then that could have a serious impact upon the, uh, the program. We're going to bring the mooring cables to the several platforms that we can adjust the tech lift one into the rim section to lift it down on the platform. With three of the wheel's rim sections in place on temporary platforms in the river, the time has come to insert the hub, spindle and legs before the fourth section completes the circle. To do it, they're using one of the biggest floating cranes in the world. Provided that the wheel is up within the next half a month or so, the next fortnight, maybe three weeks, my main concern is the capsule's arriving on time so that we get the last capsule in position on the wheel mid to end of October. If we do that, then I think we're going to do it. We're actually 24 hours late with this piece, but I'm pretty confident we can 
catch that up. We have some problems with the capsules, uh, delivery of materials, uh, quality control, and uh, we need to help um, the capsule manufacturer to overcome these problems. Nick Bailey from our team is going down to the glass manufacturers tomorrow because we have some problems with the quality control of the glass, problems uh, installing the glass. There's a further meeting next week to see if we can't improve on, on, on that particular issue as well. One of the things that we should aim to come away with uh, from today's meeting with is a known standard, if you like, a, a representative piece of glass. And This is actually not too bad. You're looking at long distances, you will be. Mm. Those are quite pronounced imperfections there. You can actually feel those with your... This, that's a and that's there. a bump, that's yeah. A, Have you had a chance to put this on the inside? Some kind of distortion across there, isn't there? Producing the complex curved glass sandwich can also produce flaws, stretch marks, which interfere with good visibility. It's pretty damn good. Well, are you all pleased with this in the last piece you saw? I'm a little bit... Uh, reassured, but what I'm... I haven't seen the stuff in Grenoble, that's, that's the problem, and, and I would like to talk to David about it. Mm -hmm. What he's saying is there is a definition yes. which is 5%, and he's saying that this passes that, and I'm saying, no, it doesn't. Are you talking about 5%? Now, there's no, there's no point us agreeing to what he's saying if, if it's going to reject this, and, we, and yet we are quite happy with it. <laughs> I mean, we're, exactly. we're really shooting ourselves in the foot. But in general, it's a good piece. I can, I can imagine, you know, from an architectural point of view, um, if this project was to be delivered in June next year, <laughs> I would reject that and I'd say, you know, we've got to, we've got to do better. I think we need it before June, actually. <laughs> Not only have they had problems with the glass itself, but now some panels are being fitted out of alignment. David Marks and the team stop production until the problem has been sorted out. Two weeks ago, we looked at six capsules that had had the roof glazing positioned but not glued. And I asked for it to be surveyed when I was here two weeks ago. They produced a survey which, on the, which on the back of the letter, it shows discrepancies which from our point of view we think are unacceptable. Let's go, let's go and discuss it in here. I don't know what the f is going on here. You just, told, you just said to me, Brian, that you know, what I had said hadn't been agreed. No, I said I can understand why it wasn't agreed, but it wasn't, but it wasn't done by me. Yeah. Firstly, this edge is exposed. So, you know, something can hit that and propagate a crack through that glass. That is very vulnerable. Watch out. Vulnerable. That's number one worry that, that we have. The real question is then, are you monitoring this? Are you measuring it the before the, the, the misalignment? Are you measuring it before you glue? Yes. So you have a, you have a, and you can put it in your glazing procedure, yes. which says if the tolerance is more or less than X, then it needs to be readjusted. Yes. Yeah? Yes, we, we, okay. we can do that. You have to live with it because if the glass cracks, you have to come to London and replace it. Yes, it's our responsibility. Yeah. yeah right. The real issue here and the reason that the works were stopped on Friday is because the glazing procedure has not been approved. We want to help you as much as anybody else because, you know, it's our necks on the line. It, 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 well, um, I'm sorry that you don't believe it, but I'm here to try and help you and Tim's here to try and help you produce a glazing procedure that will meet uh, an acceptable criteria of, of Allerton and Lomax. Yes. You know, we can't really continue the discussion unless there's agreement around the table that we're all trying to help each other. I think that's the first base. You know, if you're sitting on one side of the table and saying, no, David, uh, you know, we don't want your help, 
you know, you're not helping us, then I might as well leave. Because the only reason I'm here, I will, I will the, on, the only reason I'm here is to help you. Why don't we look at seven? Is it five or seven? Uh, that, that's why it made me think that we, we, can't, we can't meet the deadline now. I'm very pessimistic now because uh, Mace doesn't help us. Uh, and uh, well, he was always, uh, Tim is always saying, yeah, I have a red card, but he never used that. So yes. I think the architect wants to have control on everything, even the bolts, even the frame, even something like that. And they don't pay enough attention to the totality of the project itself. And they concentrate too much on some details, which is our job to, uh, to solve. It. Yeah, it looks quite high. To put it, we need to agree a process that allows us to start from this evening. The real issue for today was to get to a point where we could start work again. And what we haven't done is achieve that. So now I'd say we're up against it. We've got such a, a bespoke product that we're producing here. And I think we're just, you know, pushing things so much to the limit that something's giving. So can you At the moment, I'm extremely worried about the programme. Extremely worried. So what we may have to do is identify now whether we think we're going to have to make the programme and then discuss it on Friday at the steering group and decide what we're going to do about it. In the end, the French company confirmed in writing that they would meet the objections and measure up to David's critical standards. As French people, we say just uh, something like that and say shouting and say bad words and say, well, get stuffed and things like that. Uh, in England, the thing is a little bit different, you know, <laughs> you, can't, you can't say that. Sometimes we were um, quite uh, frustrated because we wanted to, to be angry, but we couldn't. We've pushed decisions out as far as people's own characters will allow things to be pushed. We've always got to the point almost where we could have major fallouts, but we've stopped when we thought we were going to have a major fallout. So I think it's created a lot of internal dynamics. Slowly, through all of one day, part of the night, and into the next day, the wheel rises. This is a fantastic moment. The wheel's up and it's working and it's proven to be a tremendous success. We've sold half a million tickets and it's not even open yet. I think it just goes to show what can be achieved if people really set their minds to it. Uh, it really goes to show what can be achieved when you have a deadline which is truly an immovable deadline. Their licence is for five years, but already the public is talking about decades to come. After all, the Eiffel Tower was only built to last for 20 years, and that was more than a century ago. Now that they're in the process of getting it going, oh, well, it would be such a waste of money just to have it there for five years. Why don't we have it there for 15 years, 20 years? Why don't we have it there permanently? This miserable wheel, in fact, throws the proportions out of Big Ben. Big Ben will survive it. We have a planning permission for five years. I suspect after that it's up to the people of London more than anyone else. In my industry, we get to build an awful lot of stuff that the general public just take for granted. Nobody's going to take this for granted, are they? I mean, this is London's Eiffel Tower. This is what people are going to think about when they think of London. And, you know, I've got a three-year-old boy. He loves this wheel, and I'm going to be able to walk along and say, your dad had a bit to do with that. The biggest wheel in the world is ready to turn. To mark the moment, hundreds of competition winners from around the country and around the world riding, no, flying, in the London Eye. 
everybody who's worked on this project has brought so much passion and commitment and you know sheer energy to make it happen in an impossibly short period of time. It has completely dominated our lives. Apart from that, you know, it seems to be infectious or it seems to have been infectious. And now, now that it's built, it's even more infectious. I mean, the public reaction has been amazing. To many, many people, it, it always looked like the impossible dream, a project that was just too ambitious, too difficult, too complicated, too political. But we always believed in it. And I think part of the reason that, that people admire it now is that it, it was impossible. You know, it, it has been created against the odds. And I think people just like that when that happens. To be honest, I was getting very disappointing to, right at the very last moment, uh, miss the opportunity to have uh, members of the public on there. They're having a superb time. I mean, they've got a great party here, underneath the wheel, in a barge. We're going to give them a ticket to anywhere in the world. And, of course, they'll have one of the inaugural rides on the wheel itself. It's just gone out with a bang.